right. All right. Inverse trig functions. Now, they might be on your paper like this, but they really mean this. And you're going, what do you mean by that, Bearspack? Well, it's because if this is more than, if this is just an X, it's this. But if this is more than an X, then you have to take the first, you have to take this times the first derivative of what the more than X is. And if it times that, basically it goes on the top. Okay? So these uh, three functions, you're going to go through enough of these where you'll start recognizing, oh, that's a tangent function. Oh, that's a sine function. We don't use the cosine one very often. We just see sine and tangent most often. Now, the word arctangent is the same as an inverse tangent. So arctan, intan, inverse tangent are the same. Like arc cosine or arc sine are the same as inverse sine, inverse cosine. So you just need to understand that. Okay? The only difference between sine and cosine is cosine is negative. Sine is positive. And inverse tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, so, we ready for this yet or not? No, that's not today. Is that U or an N? That's a U. All those are U's. Why? Those are all U's. And why do we use U? So it's not an X. So it's not just a thing that's alone. Okay. Lovely. All right. So the arc sine of x over 4 is the same as the inverse sine of 1 fourth x. Okay. He's on the gas. I just rewrote it. Yeah, that does say cosine up here. This thing does say cosine. Yeah, I'm sure. So, inverse sine of one fourth x, the u is one fourth x. Okay? So, what is that equal to? Well, that's equal to what's the first derivative of one fourth x? No, it's just one fourth. I was thinking x to the one fourth. Yes. Okay. So the first derivative of one fourth x is one fourth over the square root of one minus. One fourth squared is one sixteenth x squared. Thought it's a heavy side. So this would be one over four the square root of one minus one sixteenth x squared. And we just leave it like that. Yeah. How many are we doing today? Four. Since you did the biggest one last time, we're just going to round one last time. Eight. Somewhere around there. Please have the car for the weekend. It's so nice to be back. Everybody's working on the weekend. <laughs> I woke up at three this morning and haven't been didn't ever fall back to sleep. So i I'm ready to go here. I'm already on seven hours here. Yeah, I gotta go to bed on like 
I'm glad I'm your morning class. Negative energy. Your last class. The last class today, I'm going to be bouncing pre algebra kids' heads off the wall, I think. Ooh, that went on recording. Ooh, I shouldn't say that. I think we should only do like one assignment today because we got some prison evidence. Yeah. All right. Arc tangent of 3x. Obviously, u is 3x. And arc tangent is 1 over 1 plus x squared, right? Or du over 1 plus u squared. So what's the first derivative of 3x? 3 over 1 plus 3x squared, which is 3 over 1 plus 9x squared. Okay? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy for that. You just, you're just following formulas here. So it's not that difficult. You're just following formulas. Our cosine of 3x if the x happens to be negative 1 fifth. Well, first you follow the formula. What's the formula for the arc cosine of 3x? Well, it's a negative out front. What's du of 3x? 3 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So it's negative 3 over the square root of 1 minus 9x squared. Now, that's what x is. So you just plug it in for x. At negative 1 fifth squared is negative 1 over 25. So it's negative 3 over the square root of 1 minus 9 25ths. Are we all right with that? Ellie, you paying any attention to this? Okay. 1 is 25 25ths. So 25 25ths minus 9 25ths is 16 25ths. And what's the square root of 16? 4. What's the square root of 25? So it's one over, or it's negative three over four fifths. We don't leave it like that. Times five over four. So you get negative fifteen fourths. There you go. Yes, you are. But Delaney said I needed to pump the brakes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, the power rule. What's the power rule that we learned this chapter or last chapter? Well, when I no. Was doing some problems, I was getting so confused because they kept on having weird stuff. And it was never like that. <laughs> Get out of the corner. <laughs> because you said She that got mad. Yeah. That's not what the answers ever look like. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you lied to so. <laughs> I don't know how it works. Wow. Okay. So the power rule, you bring the exponent out front and you subtract one from the power. The sum of the derivatives of two things, you just add them up. The product is a product rule. Um, and I don't do it in this order. I do the, the opposite order. I do f of x times first derivative of g of x plus g of x times first derivative of f of x, but oh well. Um, it's written on your formula sheet this way. Quotient rule, denominator times first derivative of the numerator minus numerator times first derivative of the denominator over denominator squared. Chain rule is the inner function, the outer function. So you take the first derivative up and leave the inner function alone times the first derivative of the inner function. Okay, so that's what we've done over the last couple chapters. So. Wang Fang, what a name, Wang Fang. There was somebody from uh, from Clark, South Dakota, who was named Paula Paul. Oh, poor girl. And then 
That's that's not very nice. I wrestled a kid from Groton by the name of Carson Larson. <laughs> parents, when your parents just don't do that to your kids. <laughs> All right, Wang Fang tried to find the derivative of that. Here's her work. She took the derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom in the first step. Wrong. 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 So she didn't think about doing the quotient rule. Step one is wrong. So you're going to hit some problems today where you're going to look and see if they did it right or if they did it wrong. This one. Took the derivative of this plus the derivative of the inside. Wrong, because it's times the derivative of the inside. So it's not that. Yeah. Okay, how would you rewrite this so it can be differentiated using the power rule? You would just do what with that x on the outside? Distribute. Just distribute it. Just distribute it so it looks like that, so then you can use a power rule. Okay? Very straightforward. Could you rewrite this so you could use a power rule? Yeah, just divide everything by x. Just reduce power by 1. Boom! There you go. Okay? Yes, that is. So here we distributed, here we divided everything by x. Could we rewrite this one? No. Man, this is not possible. That's a bitch. You have to. Well, it's a lot of work, isn't it? Using the power rule, it says. You can't use the power rule because this would be still the quotient rule. I mean, that would be the closest one if you would do long division and get that. But still, you'd get the quotient rule. So really, you can't do the power rule. Jeez, I'm being thrown under the bus today. All right. Um, could we do this by using the product rule, possibly? Is there a way to do this using the product rule? A is the product rule. Because 1 over 3 is 1 third. X on the bottom could break, go to the top and be X to the negative 1. So if you took the sine of x times one-third x to the negative first, that would be the product rule of that. So, yes, A could be done using the product rule. Okay, this one. This one, now, people hate these problems. No? Um, I would say, I would say D, quotient rule, then the chain rule. Why do we have to use a chain rule? Because it's an inner and outer. Because there's an inner here for this. But you have to use a quotient rule first, so you br break everything up. And then once you're taking the derivative of the top, that's a chain rule. So that's why it's a quotient rule, chain rule, not chain rule, quotient rule. Okay, quotient rule, then the chain rule. Um, I don't know how it would work. All right, this one. No idea. Okay, so let's rewrite it first. 6x, this is 1 half, this is 3. 3 and a half makes 7 halves. 6x to the 7 halves times the cosecant of x. That's what we have here. Okay, so how would we do this? Yeah, 
This is x to the one half. This is x to the third. So three plus one half is three and a half, which is seven halves. Okay. So. Attitude, now walk. <laughs> All right. So this would be the product rule. I think it would just be the product. See, that's what I'm seeing. I'm thinking it's, well, here I would just use the product rule, but maybe they want us to somehow work with that. Is the inner, 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 inner There is no inner on this one. So the product rule, I think it's the product rule than the chain rule. I don't know what the correct answer on this one is because it should be just the product rule. No, I don't. So, so when you get, if you happen to hit this problem today, we'll figure, we'll announce to the class what the actual answer is. Like this one, I know would be the product rule than the chain rule. Okay, that one's product rule, chain rule. The first, the one before, all I see is the product rule, unless. Unless, oh, no. This one. Yeah, it's an inner outer. Actually. So there's an inner inner. Chain rule, chain rule. Chain rule, chain rule again. But what would you do the second product rule of? That's why I think it's chain rule. The six X to the one. I think chain rule then. Hey. Yes, that's what I think by arguing about that one. Oh, shut up. Ooh. Okay. So, this one. Now we're actually took that advice from the last section and we're going to actually do this. Okay, so what what should we do on this one? Product rule, chain rule. Product rule, chain rule. So product rule, three x squared times the first derivative of this, which is really one half power. So it's one half times the square root of five x plus three. Well, five x plus three to the negative one half times the inner, which is five plus the square root of 5x plus 3 times 6x. Because it's a chain rule. One half times exactly what appears here to the power, and then times the first derivative of the inside. Yeah, I'm doing the product rule, and while I'm doing the product rule, I'm doing the chain rule of that part. Okay, so if we want to re reverse this, this is what it is. It's the first thing times the first derivative of this. Okay, so, so we're taking the first times the first derivative of the second plus the second times the first derivative of the first. Okay? 
N no, this is just what steps we're taking. Then when we mathed it out, the first derivative of this is this up here, which we use the chain rule to do this. So that's why it's product rule, chain rule. I just wrote it in one step because I was thinking that you could see that, you know, we were doing at one step. Of the square root of 5x plus 3, just 1 half times 5x plus 3 to the negative 1 half. Why is there a times 5 at the end if it's just... Because there's an inner and an outer of a square root function, and when you take the... There's when, an inner and the outer of that? Yeah, the outer is the square root, the inner is the 5x plus 3. So you have to take the first derivative of the inner times the end of it. So, we get, in this first part, 15x squared over 2 square root of 5x plus 3 plus 3x squared times the square root of 5x plus 3. Now you're saying, hold your horses, Mr. Bierschbach. There's not a single one of these that matches that. Well, yes, I know that. Because we need to get a... Common denominator, because right now this is over 1. So to get a common denominator, we multiply this one by 2 times the square root of 5x plus 3 in the denominator. So you multiply the numerator by 2 times the square root of 5x plus 3. What does that give us? Well, we take real number part times real number part and square root part times square root part. I should say whole number part times whole number part, but whatever. So we get 6x squared times 5x plus 3. Because the square root times square root is what you get over 2 square root of 5x plus 3. And then we distribute. So we get 15x squared plus 30x cubed plus 18x squared over 2 square root of 5x plus 3. 15 plus 18 is 33. Uh oh. Nope. Where'd Mr. Beerschbach go wrong? Oh, we're not giving up. No, no, no. That's not an option. 5 times 3x squared is 15x squared. Whoa, it's not 3x squared, it's 6x right here. And then when we multiply, it's 12x times that, and 12 times that would be 60x plus 36, 60x squared plus 36. Add those together, that's 75x plus 36x, and that. What screwed me up is I used this, not this. So should we only just do two lessons today instead of four? There's two on this, yes. Because when do we get behind and we have to do eight in a single class period? I don't want to do that. No, again. I think we need to slow down on this chapter because I don't know anything yeah. that's going on. Because so I'm sure we, we can afford to add like that chapter. Can we just work for a little yeah, while and see where we're at? No. No. Let's, we're going to keep going on this till we get to the bottom of this. Ooh, we're at the bottom of this. And then we're going to work on this. We'll see. Okay. Ready? Not really. What do you think we do here? 
Product rule, there's no product rule here. There's no quotient rule here. Chain rule, chain rule. Chain rule, chain rule. And you're going, chain rule, chain rule? Why isn't it just chain rule? Well, because the cotangent of e to the 2x, there's an inner, and then on the inner, there's a more complicated power than just x. So that's why it's chain rule, chain rule. Okay, so what is a chain rule? You start with the cotangent, okay? What's the first derivative of the cotangent? Negative cosecant squared of the function e to the 2x times the, times of the, the first derivative of the inner, which is 2e to the 2x. Because you have to take the first derivative of this. No, x just doesn't disappear. Because what's the first derivative of the e to the x? It's e to the x. So e to the 2x, you have to take e to the 2x times the first derivative of the top, which is 2. So that's why it's 2e to the x. So that's the chain rule for this. So we applied the chain rule to that. And that's what we got. Okay, now can you just do it all again? Okay. Let's say we have the cotangent of u, where u equals e to the 2x. What's the first derivative of e to the 2x? e to the 2x times the first derivative of its power, which is 2, or 2e two to the 2x. Okay, that's what u prime is. What's the first derivative of the cotangent of u? Well, it's negative cosecant squared of u times the first derivative of u. So now if we just fill in u and u prime, it's negative cosecant squared of e to the 2x times 2e to the 2x. And if you bring the 2 out front, then it's this one. All right.